on the spot on the song of Redeem. He pretty much kind of started my little thing early. So we kind of went out there on, on, on the spot. But, but it's interesting when, when you think about God's uh, uh, word because he does so much uh, for us. And according to uh, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7, we know that there's three that are record in heaven. The Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Word. So the Word bears record in heaven. And then we know that the Word also sanctifies us. In John chapter 17 and verse number 17, he said, Sanctify them with thy truth. Uh, thy word is true. And then some of the scriptures that uh, Brother Perry has uh, picked out, you know, that have been read to you today. Matthew 4, 4, that man should not uh, live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And how we must study God's word to show ourselves to prove unto him and how his word will never pass away. I mean, if you were to start talking about all of the good things that God word has done for you, I mean, you, you don't have enough time. You don't have enough time to do it. But what I want to do exactly today, uh, and I noticed that most of the text I read today uh, talked about uh, uh, how good his word was to us uh, in the New Testament. But when I was uh, thinking about uh, the word, uh, there was a certain uh, passage that came to my mind, and uh, you can turn it if you want to. It's actually Psalms chapter 119. And for those of you who have never read Psalms chapter 119, uh, most of you may know that that is the longest chapter uh, in the Bible. And what I find interesting about that chapter is that it has 176 verses. Uh, and out of those 176 verses, uh, 173 of them have some type of reference to the Word of God. So 173 out of 176 verses talk about the Word of God. The only three verses that don't really mention the Word of God is verse number 84, verse number 121, and verse number 122. And so what I'll do is I'll look uh, quickly as I look at the time. Uh, a couple of things uh, that God's Word uh, does for us. And I start out with Psalms chapter 119 and verse number 11. The psalmist says, uh, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Uh, that I might not sin against thee. See, what we have to learn, church, is that we have to uh, store God's word uh, in our mind, and we have to keep it there for future use, because we will run into uh, opportunities for us to sin. But if we have his word and preserved and stored in our mind, then it will help keep us from sinning against him. And that's exactly what the psalmist had in mind. But not only does God's word uh, keep us from sin, but it also lifts our burdens. In Psalm chapter 119, in verse number 28, the Bible says, my heart uh, uh, melted for heaviness. He said, strengthen thou me according to thy word. And so what he's referring to is that uh, life's hard knocks, life's uh, oppressions, those uh, troubling things that we go through in this world, uh, sometimes the burdens get uh, very heavy on us. And so what he was asking during this time, he said, Lord, strengthen me. Because as we go through this life, there are some things that bring tears to our eyes. And this is actually what the psalmist had in mind. He's pouring out himself. He's, he's, he's burdened low. He needs some help. And so he said, Lord, strengthen me uh, through your, uh, your word. And not only does God's word lift our burdens, but it also uh, guides us. He said in Psalm chapter 119, in verse number 105, he said, Thy word is a, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We have to realize that God's word is the scripture is a light in a dark world. And what it does to us is that it exposes our imperfections and it, and it exposes uh, who we really are and it leads us to believe and lets us know that we need a righteousness greater than ourselves. And so his word uh, guides us and points us in the right directions and keeps us from stumbling uh, over uh, the devil's snares and, the, and the, the traps that he put in front of us. And it also keeps us from falling into the pit. And not only does God's word uh, guide us, but his word also brings us joy. In Psalm chapter 119 and verse number 111, he said, thy, thy testimonies have I kept as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. And so he said that basically your word, God, is I'm keeping it as a heritage. In other words, picture it as an inheritance, something that we inherited. Inherited, and he realized, uh, and he may have understood what Isaiah was saying, Isaiah 59, 21, because God's word is passed down from father to son. It's passed down from generation to generation. It's passed down from seed to seed. And here he is, a psalmist, he has it in his possession, and he's now keeping it because it, it brings joy to him. And not only that, I found another scripture that, was, that, that goes right along with this scripture in uh, Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16, where the Bible says, Thy word was found, uh, and he 
he said, I did eat of it. And he said, Thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. God's word brings us joy. And not only does God's word uh, bring us joy, it also leads to wisdom. Psalms uh, 119 and verse number 130, he said, The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. See, we must understand is that when we approach God, we have to come to God as a babe, and, and we have to come to God as someone that is simple so that he can pour himself into us. And, 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 and if we don't come to him that way, then we'll actually miss it. And I know this is true because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, he, he said, I thank thee, God, he was talking to the Father, that thou hast hidden these mysteries from the wise and the prudent, and the prudent but have revealed them unto babes. And so that his word, it leads uh, to wisdom. And when you think about it, just think about the, the, the Bible in itself. You can go to Generations and read the first three chapters and how it breaks down uh, the oracles of God. You can find out about the creation of man. You can find out about the innocence of man. You can find out about the fall of man and how Satan tempted him. Then you can find out about the recovery of man and the salvation through Jesus Christ through the seed of a woman. You can find out about the oracles of God and the, the rudiments of religion. There's so much wisdom in God's word that can make even a simple person wise through God's word. And not only does God's word bring us wisdom, but it also gives us peace. It's nothing like having peace. You know what I'm saying? In Psalm chapter 119 and verse 165, the Bible says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. In other words, what he was saying is that when we have God's word, it's a peace. It's a peace of conscience. It's a peace in Jesus Christ to let us know that, that hey, there's nothing in the world that can steal our peace. See, in the world, there's nothing but tribulations. But see, in God, there is nothing but peace which the world cannot give or take away. Yeah, you may be, people may do some wrong things to you. They may treat you bad. You may have some enemies and things like that. But you still have peace in Christ through his word. And finally, uh, not only does God's word uh, bring us peace, but it brings us back to God. Psalms chapter 119 and verse number 176, the Bible says, I have gone astray uh, like a sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. In other words, what do you mean? Sheep have a uh, nature of uh, wandering off. And sometimes they wander off and they get lost. They wander off too far. Well, if you think about it, we do the same thing. Sometimes we wander from God. We slowly get away from God. And sometimes we wander for too long. And sometimes we wander to places where we do get lost. But when we do get lost, he's asking and he's begging. He's saying, seek me, Lord. What do you mean? Come find me. Look me up. Don't let me go. Don't ever let me wander too far away from you. Why? Because I have not forgot your commandments. And, and, and I have a desire uh, to follow your commandments. And that's what the psalmist was saying. And so I, I love chapter 119 because it's just seven things that I pointed out uh, to you. But God's word is, is so good to us that it should cause us to hunger and thirst for it. And we should want to eat of it just like Jeremiah did so that it can bring us joy. So as I, I leave you today, I, I pray uh, and, and I ask you to pray with me that we may always uh, cherish and adore God's word, just like the psalmist did when he took up 173 out of 176 verses to talk about God's word. Thank you. Amen.